Mandale Mwanyekwa. Um, I'm also known as Kid Mama and I'm a sculptor artist from Tanzania. Yeah. Okay, I came to here about Tulipamwe through the internet. Actually, it was on Facebook. It was just posted on Facebook and I happened to see the link and then I just I just took it and went through the um, the requirements and I said this is something I can apply for. Yeah. But I do all kinds of uh, sculptures but I'm fascinated by abstract wooden pieces which I find they tell me more stories than the other pieces that I do. Work with other materials mm -hmm. like uh, wood, metal, bronze, stone, clay and cement casting mm -hmm. and also paper mache sometimes. Okay. This is my number one. Okay. Wood is my number one choice in all the materials. Uh, but also I'm very much attached to clay. Yeah, clay and cement casting. Okay. At first, before I came to Tulipangwe, I thought of um, trying on doing something different, like something that I don't normally do. But then I said, let me just take, take, um, take my personal tools and materials, just in case I, I don't, I change my mind, I say. So when, when, when I got to, to Namibia, to window at the National Gallery, and they went, they took us to the, um, to the gallery house, and then I saw the woods, and then I was like, whoa, whoa, inspired. Then when, when we went to um, Etuke, the place where we, we were producing the, the artworks, somebody from the organization told me they happened to be um, taking the materials, the wood especially for the uh, for the workshop, but they usually happen to return back with the wood without no one touching. So that is where I got more inspired and I said I must do wood so that this time the wood doesn't cry. To do justice to the wood, but also I I felt like I could be able to inspire other people to do the wood when they see me working mm. with the wood, which mm. I did. Like I managed to inspire a lot of people towards the end of the workshop. I saw a lot of people working with wood and come to me, ask some, for some advice on how to use the chisels and how to go about what they want to do. Yeah, even borrowing some of my chisels. In fact, the wood was, was nice, it was beautiful, it's actually one of the woods that I've worked with before and then back home. Um, we call it Mninga, I don't know the, the Namibian name of it, but we call it Mninga in, in, in Tanzania and everybody knows Mninga, because they use it for um, mostly furniture, but the sculptors use it to sculpt as well. Yeah, um, and to me, Mninga wood is, is in a group of soft wood because I'm used to work with hardest woods, which I find um, they, they, they inspire me more and they, they give me more space and more freedom, more freedom of working with because they don't break easily. So I can get whichever details that I want out of it. So I feel like very free working with hardest wood than the soft. Yeah, that the wood was a female type of wood it was even making it more inspirational and more beautiful. Go. Uh, the difference between male and female wood is that the female wood is always with lots of grains, like very beautiful grains, and they can be seen like, like very um, openly. And the male wood is always like plain. It can have grains, but very small grains, not like the female one. 
So that's the difference. And, but, but again, if you don't know how to work with the, um, with the grains, you will never see them, like they will never appear. Yeah, so you will get confused because there's a way that you're supposed to work with them, especially on the last touches, like the finishing part of the work, like sanding particularly. When you sand, if the grains happen to go this, this way, then you have to sand going towards the same direction. When the grains go this direction, you follow the direction. You have to follow where the grains go and you have to really know, realize where they came from and where they are going. So you have to really be patient with it because it's a very um, tough um, process of finishing. Okay, so most people talk about, when I came here, I heard most people talk about polishing or vanishing my sculpture. So many people was, were asking me, then you polish it, then you vanish it. Then I've been telling them, no, I usually don't vanish or polish my, my sculptures. I usually finish them by oiling them by using natural oil, especially cloth, which gives the, the, the pieces longer life as it protects it from eaten by the insect and from um, getting cracks. It um, um, maintain the nature of the wood, like you can see the natural color of the wood, whereby polishing or vanishing spoils the nature of the wood. Um, honestly, I always enjoy working with wood. Whether it's soft, whether it's hard, whether it's wet, anything with wood, I just enjoy because I enjoy and love the material, not just enjoying, I love it. So there was no any, um, any problems with me. The only challenge was the weather and the, uh, the time frame of the workshop. But I know, I understand that you, you're not supposed to do a finished um, product during the, the, the workshop. So for me, I would say this piece is not a finished product. Yeah, because I would need a minimum of six months for me to be happy with the, the, the sculpture, particularly this type of wood, because the wood being soft, it also requires more time to work with it because of the grains being zigzag, wiggly, yeah. You are my hero. I mean, um, for me, um, seeing the group of artists, which includes a big number of female artists, is a great um, um, achievement, I would say, yeah. About the process, the process is always, there's the, there's the, there's the, um, the starting of, of, of the, the actual piece and then there's main job and there's, there's the finishing which I would say the hardest part of, of sculpting or any art, any, any form of art or even building, you know? Yeah, so that's, it was fine but the rain. Yeah. The rain was a problem. Huh? Big problem because yeah. wood, um, wood, especially when you you've already turned it into a piece of art, it does not like water and sun. They're not friendly. No water, no sun. Yeah, so it was a challenge, but I took the challenge as an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. But at least your challenge came up to be something substantial. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim.